Welcome class to week four. We're going to take a break from our discussion boards and our quizzes this week. Um, we are, there is a practice quiz for this module, but I've moved the actual quiz that's for our grade and the discussion post until next week. Um, you did have two discussion boards due this past Sunday. Um, in addition, um, I wanted to give you an opportunity to really practice on your skills. As you recall, last week I spoke with you about uh, the purpose of history and how you have to have a critical eye and the lens for which we want to approach historical um, ideas. This week I want you to really practice note taking and I think all of these strategies will help you be successful not just in this course but also in other classes. It's a long haul between now and December and I really want to set you up for success. So last week we discussed basically the overarching ideas for history and this week uh, we're going to extend our discussion on note taking. So I want to start with taking notes when reading. Reading for pleasure is very different than when you're studying or when you're trying to remember information. This is actually an active exercise, what we do in this class. So I'm going to go over a few strategies that I need you to use when you're taking notes. As you recall, I asked you guys when you're doing your discussion post to break up the different parts of the discussion post. I recommend you separate each of the different items that you are being asked to respond to and make your notes. Then you can go back and delete the prompts and put in some transitions. This will help you ensure that you've um, answered the entire discussion post. And then also, of course, printing out the rubric, having that in front of you, self-assessing, maybe have someone else assess your writing with the rubric. All of these things take time, but from week to week, that's, that's why you have a whole week to do a discussion post, is so that you have a thorough and comprehensive post. But note one of the things from the rubric is using evidence from the text. So not only will this note-taking strategies help you with preparing for quizzes and tests, but it'll also help you with discussion posts. So some of the strategies um, that you can use is one, to make sure that you're pulling out important points. But what do you do with those important points? First, by writing notes in your own words, you'll be forced to think about the ideas from the text and you'll have to explain them. So in other words, write down what you see, but use your own words. How would you explain them to someone who you're face to face with like a friend. You know, hey, what are you learning about in class? Then try to put it in your own words. Using your own words is critical to the process of copying those notes. Of course, there are times where you will be copying information because there's only so many ways to say it, um, but you should try your best to do, the, to do it the different way, which is to re rewrite it in your own words. And obviously, there's no magic formula. Each of you will have to find out what works best for you. Highlighting is another quick and easy way for you to note take. Um, it's not optimum, but sometimes uh, this is good, especially when you have long articles or supplemental notes. In order to do that, of course, the material has to be yours. With the supplemental material in this class and the PowerPoints, a great way to start is to print all of these, and that way you can highlight and make notes on the paper. Um, although most of you are probably comfortable with things that are digital, um, the learning process, your brain, the way it works, um, is it's more optimum for you to print and have the hard copy. That way you can engage with the text. Sticky notes are another great strategy, not as good as putting things in your own words or highlighting, but that is something that can often come into come in handy. Color coding, maybe having a system of different colors meaning different things is also really good. Uh, glossary, making sure that you have maybe a separate sheet for important terms. And then obviously keeping your notes organized and well structured so that you can use them later, maybe even like headings or different sheets. And then bright colors in your color coding system or as you highlight, not only does it keep you interested and motivated, but it also helps draw you to important key ideas. 
If you write a quotation, it's very critical that you notate this properly, including a page number. In fact, all references should be notated um, throughout. It will save you time having to go back and capture those references later. So keep a record of your source, depending on the style that you're using, whether it's APA or MLA. Um, generally, you always need the same information. It just um, may be written differently, but the publisher, uh, the source, the date, uh, where it was published, you know, whether it's an article or online website, those types of things, it, generally you're providing the same information. So if it's something that you know you're going to have to reference, go ahead and write that down. And then if it's a, a quotation, go ahead and write down the page number. And then a lot of people just do index cards. It really depends on the size of your project if you're using index cards. Um, for what we're doing, I think it will suffice for you just to print the PowerPoint and the supplemental notes and to write notes to yourself and highlight. But I'm trying to give you some broad uh, range strategies as well. So this week, your task is to go back and make sure, one, that you've completed all the tasks thus far. Some of you are uh, behind and you have not completed all of your discussion posts. Remember that there was two due Sunday. And then also to read through all of the supplemental materials this week and make sure that you are using the strategies that you've been provided.